Thanks for staying with us here at 1030. The shelling continues in Ukraine as the government there accuses Russia of violating a ceasefire, worsening an already dangerous situation for civilians trying to evacuate. This as Ukraine's president calls for the U.S. to issue tougher sanctions on Russia, as well as a no-fly zone, and as Russia's president issues a warning of his own. Cole Higgins has the latest. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky again calling for U.S. assistance in establishing a no-fly zone in his country and harsher sanctions on Russia. What else is needed to make this decision? Zelensky pleading with U.S. lawmakers during an hour-long Zoom call Saturday morning. The president emphasized that the oil and gas sector of Russia needs to be sanctioned. Anything that could hurt the Russian economy will help the Ukrainian people. Russian President Vladimir Putin calling the sanctions already introduced on his country, quote, equivalent of a declaration of war. Putin also says he would consider countries imposing a no-fly zone over Ukraine as participating in the conflict. The U.S. and NATO say they still oppose implementing a no-fly zone over Ukraine. The world is united in support of Ukraine and against Russia's aggression. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken pledging financial aid for the growing refugee crisis while visiting a refugee reception center in Poland. More than half of the over 1.3 million refugees fleeing Ukraine have crossed into Poland, according to U.N. estimates. Civilians trapped in eastern and southern Ukraine unable to escape the fighting. The Ukrainian government accusing Russian forces of violating a ceasefire establishing humanitarian corridors. The Red Cross says the operation is postponed following Russian forces continued shelling. I am absolutely sure that the aim of Putin is to destroy Ukraine as a nation. I'm Cole Higgins reporting. Patients and staff are sheltering in the basement of Ukraine's largest children's hospital. Kids recovering from operations, cancer patients, and newborns among those being treated in the makeshift medical bunker in the basement of the hospital. An acclaimed Ukrainian documentary filmmaker who wants to remain anonymous recorded this video. Despite the chaos happening throughout Ukraine, Airbnb hosts are being flooded with bookings from people all over the world, even though the guests have no plans to visit. It's part of a social media campaign to funnel money to Ukrainians in need of financial assistance as Russian forces bombard their country and cut off services. Airbnb says on March 2nd and 3rd, guests from around the world booked more than 61,000 nights in Ukraine. More than half of those nights were booked by Americans. Organizers of the campaign are urging people to make sure the rentals are operated by individuals and not companies. Airbnb has said it is offering temporary housing in neighboring countries to up to 100,000 Ukrainians who are fleeing their country right now. It's also waiving guests and host fees in the country. Elon Musk says foreign government officials have told his satellite internet company to block Russian news sources amid the invasion. Musk tweeted Friday night, Starlink has been told by some governments, not Ukraine, to block Russian news sources. We will not do so unless at gunpoint. He followed it up with, sorry to be a free speech ab absolutist. It's unclear which governments Musk is referring to in a tweet. Musk sent a truckload of Starlink antennas to Ukraine this week, responding to a plea from the country's vice prime minister amid fears that Ukrainians could lose internet access if Russia continues its attacks on communication infrastructure. A two-time Olympic gold medalist and WNBA All-Star has been reportedly been arrested in Russia on drug charges. According to the Russian news agency TASS, Brittany Griner was taken into custody at the Moscow airport in February. Customs agents allegedly found vapes with liquid cannabis or hash oil in Griner's carry-on, which is an illegal substance in Russia. Griner, who plays with the Phoenix Mercury in the U.S., spends her off-season playing for a Russian women's basketball team. The U.S. State Department says it stands ready to provide all appropriate consular services. WNBA officials issued a statement of support for the 31-year-old Griner, asking for her swift and safe return to the U.S. There's been no comment yet from Griner or her representatives.